So for whatever reason, I still don't understand. People didn't like Timothy Dalton as Bond, and they didn't like Timothy Dalton's films. So, after a six year hiatus without Bond films, came one of my all time favorites, GoldenEye, starring Pierce Brosnan as James Bond in his first outing. I love GoldenEye. It's got everything I want in a James Bond film. Exhilarating action, a great Bond girl, a great actor playing Bond, an awesome set of villains, great set pieces, and while the score is a little meh at times, it's got some great tracks in there. Pierce is not my favorite Bond. That will always be Sean Connery. But he is one of my favorites and the Bond that I grew up with. I like him more than Craig, even though it's close now, but I... GoldenEye is the first Bond film I ever saw, Tomorrow Never Dies was the second, and The World Is Not Enough is the first Bond film I ever bought. So right there, GoldenEye is very nostalgic to me. It's the first James Bond film I ever saw. Pierce was the first Bond I ever saw, even though I knew Sean Connery was the first always. But yeah, it's a nostalgic treasure, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it is just a great James Bond film that's entertaining and just all out awesome. The opening teaser is one of my all-time favorites. It's spectacular. Sean Bean is a double-O agent. As if that isn't awesome enough, we get an awesome stunt where uh, Bond jumps off a of bungee, does bungee jump off a dam, and it's just awesome. Lots of action, really exciting. Now, quick spoiler warning here, Sean Bean is an awesome villain. His uh, rivalry with Bond, where Bond has to kill his own friend after feeling bad about letting him get killed in the opening teaser. It's just an awesome complexity that kind of deals with Bond's coldness. I like how it all plays out and how Bean plays the villain. Famke Jansen plays the femme fatale of this movie, Xenia Anatov. Yes, another perverted name. We haven't seen one of those in a while. But Famke Jansen's awesome in this movie, and she, you could tell she just loves hamming up the scenes as this over-the-top femme fatale. And then Natalia, played by Isabel Skrupko, is just an awesome Bond girl. She's one of my favorites, because she's strong, but she's not, like, to the point where she's better than Bond, because you can tell she still needs Bond, but she doesn't like, get, get taken hostage or anything. She's great. This film has some of the most well-crafted and exhilarating action sequences I've ever seen. Directed by Martin Campbell, he's an awesome action director. He went on to uh, direct Zorro, the Zorro films, Casino Royale, and the less spectacular Green Lantern, but that was just one misstep out of many great films he's done. So GoldenEye is one of my favorite movies, and GoldenEye the video game for the Nintendo 64 is one of my all-time favorite video games. It's just awesome. So after GoldenEye, two years afterwards, we got Tomorrow Never Dies, which doesn't have as good of a video game and isn't as good of a movie, but it's actually a really exciting and fun James Bond film, and yeah, let's talk about it. Tomorrow Never Dies is actually a pretty fun movie. It's kind of forgettable, but it's got a great villain, another great performance by Pierce Brosnan, a good Bond girl, and some awesome action sequences, including what is quite possibly one of my favorite car chases in movie history. It's unique, it's exhilarating, and it's awesome. You can tell that Jonathan Price as the villain, Elliot Carver, he's just loving it. He's enjoying himself every minute and that he just loves hamming it up as this just business television tycoon who wants to do some evil stuff in a very stupid plot but entertaining. The big problem with Tomorrow Never Dies is that it's really, really stupid. The plot is just outrageously dumb. It's not a good espionage thrill at all. And the action sequences don't have a lot of tension, but they are really entertaining and inventive. And that's why I like this movie, because it's just a lot of fun. It's one of those movies where you can just put in, and I don't know, at night and just turn your brain off for two hours and enjoy it, kind of like Octopussy, maybe even more so than that movie, this has more action. Terry Hatcher is not a very good Bond girl, but our main Bond girl, Michelle Yeoh, is pretty great. She's awesome, she's good looking, but the thing I don't like is that she seems more capable than Bond, and no agent should ever be more capable than Bond, because that's why I watch these movies, because he's the world's best secret agent, and I don't really like that. But like I said, Tomorrow Never Dies is just an extremely entertaining movie, a great movie to turn your brain on for two hours because there's loads of action, excitement, great villain, great Bond girl, great Bond, and all the above. You know, and yeah, I, it's not as good as GoldenEye, of course, but it's still a fun movie. 
Now, before I talk about The World Is Not Enough, I just want to say that uh, Jonan Baker from The Living Daylights actually returned to replace Felix Slater, who got his leg bitten off by a shark and licensed to kill. He's actually a pretty cool character who I would have really have liked to have seen again. I don't know, I just kind of liked his presence. I think Jordan Baker's a pretty likable character actor. And it would have been nice to see him in one of these other movies. But unfortunately we didn't, but I just thought I'd mention him for the hell of it. So if you don't like Tomorrow Never Dies, you might like this one a little more. Because it's not a particularly fun Bond movie. It's more of a serious Bond movie, but... I don't know, I don't hate The World Is Not Enough. But it's... Definitely one of the my least favorites of the series. It's just eh. See, my big issue here is that it brings up a lot of interesting ideas, but they just not really. They're not very well executed. Like Bond being vulnerable and breaking his arm just kind of gets wasted, and Renard, the main villain, doesn't. He's invincible, but then he gets hurt at the end of the movie. And you got a great actor here. You got Robert Carlyle as Renard, this invincible guy. And it's like, I don't know, it's just a wasted, wasted potential of a character. Because, you mean, you got a great actor there. And he's just, I don't know, he doesn't get any interesting scenes to show off his invincibility. Oh, he holds a, a rock. But anyway, um, yeah, this wasted potential there. Great ideas though. Um, the opening teaser is actually pretty great. Um, it's a little long, and I think it should have ended after this one part in Switzerland, I believe it was. Um, but yeah, this part is really cool. It's a really well done action scene. It's a little more serious this time, a little more tension, and the boat chase is really exhilarating. Really well done. Um, it should have been after the credits, but oh well. Um, and then it builds up a really good story that just gets really confusing and complicated and just kind of makes you lose interest, I guess. I mean, the action sequences are fantastic. I mean, they got the typical Pierce Brosnan shooting machine guns and running away from explosions and stuff. And they're really inventive and fun. And so I can't really complain there, but um, that's really the only thing that makes this movie good is that it's got some really great action sequences to save it. Sophie Marcel is really good in the movie, but her and Bond just have some awkward chemistry, like there's this weird love thing going on. But Denise Richards as Christmas Jones, oh, it was a bad casting choice, but it's kind of funny, but still, like in a serious movie, I don't really think she needed to be here. I wish they would have picked a better actress to play the part. Oh, and the name is stupid as hell too, I should probably mention that. Now, what I do like about this movie, another thing, is that we get more of Judy Dench's M, who's always great in the role. And I like how she gets a little more to do in this movie, even though, again, it's kind of waste of potential. But, I mean, it's pretty well done, actually. It ain't that bad. And Judy Dench is, of course, always great. She does a good job in this movie. However, the world's not enough ain't horrible. It's certainly a goldfinger compared to the next film. Sadly, this was Desmond Llewellyn's last film as Q. He starred in 17 James Bond films, and he was replaced by someone who was a pretty decent casting choice, comedian John Cleese. Now, I'm not a big fan of the thought that Q is supposed to be a comedic character, but if they were going to make him a comedian, at least they got the funniest comedian of all time. His only movie he was Q in was Die Another Day, which... Okay. I know it may have seemed like A View to a Kill is my least favorite or Never Say Never Again, but this is probably the worst out of the Eon Production series. Well, and Never Say Never Again. This movie is absolute crap. You can just tell from the opening teaser that this is going to be a different type of Pierce Brosnan film. I mean, it's still got the cliched machine guns running away from explosions, but there's more of it, and it's just an overload of cheese. But, I mean, the opening teaser aren't that bad, and it's almost kind of promising until the Madonna theme comes on and then we get one of the worst movies in the entire series. Alright, you know what, I'll just calm myself down. Before I continue bitching again, I will explain why this is one of the worst, or at least one of my least favorites. Let's talk about the Bond girl. Halle Berry is almost related to Sam, and yes, she looks nice in a bikini, but she's annoying as fuck and she's probably the worst Bond girl ever. The chemistry between these two is shit, and honestly, just started to annoy me because the script and the dialogue is just absolute shit in this movie. Not just from these two characters and their chemistry, but for most everybody in this freaking movie just sucks ass. 
The action is alright, but some of the editing is weird and it just goes way too overboard on CGI BS and just it strays away from the realism. And then there's windsurfing. It's just the CGI is awful and the sequence is just awful. Pierce does a pretty good job in the movie, but just he, he can't really work with a, this awful script that well. But I mean, he's good with what he works with. Toby Stevens as Gustav Graves is a pretty mediocre villain, and his sidekick's kinda cool, but same can be said for him. Oh, and there's an invisible car. Enough said. So I think I made my point in why I think this movie's shit. Shit Bond girl, mediocre villains, shit script, way too over the top for Bond, and the series just need a fresh start yet again. And I think this time we got the best fresh start of the entire series. Tune in for the next video to see my review of the Daniel Craig era.